Hello everyone, this is Ben Dunn, founder of Antarctic Press, creators, creator of such comics as Ninja High School, Warrior Nun, Marvel Magniverse, uh, Tomorrow Girl, Bikini Sentai G-Rangers, a host of other comics. Check them out. Do a Google search. You'll find a bunch of stuff I did. So, um, yesterday I, uh, <clears throat> I asked a question that I've always kind of wondered. The real reason I cast this guy was just doing my stuff, you know, drawing comics, you know, having a good time. And then just like, you know, a thought hit me as to, uh, you know, I, I talked to a couple of uh, other creators and it grew in what, what motivates someone to want to be a comic book creator? I mean, truth be told, it's not a very lucrative career, to be honest. It's very, very... Very, very difficult to make comics a success to the point where you can actually make a living off of it. Yeah, you could probably make a living working for the big two, you know, but uh, uh, they they will throw you away like yesterday's trash once you're no longer either popular or useful to them. And it, uh, I hate to say it, but that's, that's fact, you know. The... Comic industry is littered with, you know, once hot pros that no longer uh, do anything for the big two anymore because they just weren't uh, popular enough. But, hey, this reality is the fact of life. So, I asked the question, why did you want to be a comic creator? So, um, I got quite a bit of response. So, let's go through some of them and see what uh, people have to say. See what the public has to say at large or fellow creators. So... You know, so here Monty Anderson says the for the creativity to fashion a whole universe of whimsical characters and superheroes. Well, that is really, really an admirable. Uh, uh, you know, that's really admirable. You know, I mean, a lot of us want to be able to be part of something bigger, more creative. And comics are great because it's so simple to get in. It's a very, very low, uh, low entry point. You know, you can anybody who can draw or has an idea can do a comic. You know, it's not like movies or any other type of media where it takes you know a lot of effort, money, and manpower, you know, to uh, to do something. But you know, it's one of those things where, uh, uh, at the same time, it's uh, not taken all that seriously overall by the entertainment community. I mean, it gives uh, gives us a lot of uh, gives us a lot of. Uh, control over things, you know, because you can create vast worlds on a piece of paper. You know, you're not limited by budget. Oh, here, David Campetti says, comics gave me joy as a child and spurred me creatively. Wow. That is fantastic. I think that's the way with most people, you know. Luis Ramon Lopez, it's, it's my expression for my own sanity. It keeps me alive in one piece. It's all the talent I could give for myself to tell my ideas for bringing life to the imagination I could. Wow. You know, so far I haven't uh, read anyone saying I'm doing it for the money. <laughs> you know, I'm doing it because I want to be a big time comic book creator and make tons of money. You know, I want to have my stuff made into movies and TV shows. I want the world to know my idea. You know, so far it's just very, very personal, which I like. You know, I think it's very, very... You know, I think it's it's a very good indicator of the type of people that are in the comics community. So Robert Molteri says, I've been wanting to be a comic creator since I was a kid, struggling with attention deficit disorder and dyslexia. Thanks to my mom, comics books have, oh my gosh, that is so sweet. That's really great. You know, to be a comic creator, to overcome some sort of, you know, internal struggle or disability. I mean, that's to show you the power of comics, you know, power of comics. Tony Brown says, a natural talent that I inherited from my father. Drawing has always been easy for me. <laughs> well, Tony, it hasn't been so easy for most people, that's for sure. So it's very, very fortunate indeed that <clears throat> you, uh, you have the talent to create your own stuff. That's fantastic. Bobby Nash, I love comics. I love the creativity that he spawned me as spawned in me as a child. Comics made me want to draw, then later to write and create characters that still make me feel that way too. Yes, you know, everyone has an inner character inside that wants to come out and be shared with the world. And that is that's fantastic. Jason Adams says, to get 
all of this out of my head. Oh my goodness, Jason, you may want to you want to seek some help there, you know. <laughs> Maybe comics are therapeutic. Maybe doing comics helps you create an outlet or release, you know. It's one of those things where it, it's one it uh, it may be very therapeutic for people to let them do comics. Maybe we should take insane people, give them, you know, pieces of paper and pencil and and just let them, you know, write their thoughts down, you know. Let it let it come out. Let them express themselves. Timothy B. Fling I got into comics writing because I wanted to meet girls. Results are mixed at best. Well, Timothy, I would keep it up because, you know, as anyone, as anything has taught us, chicks love comic book writers. Ooh, yes, they just love them. Mike W. Belcher, uh, I don't remember a time comics weren't in my life. They made me dream of better days and fuel my imagination. Oh, that's so great. Yes, comics... Comics are should be a, a force of positivity. You know, we should. Uh, it, it gives people to read. It enters them into new worlds of imagination. It's one of those things that's just unlimited. You know. Uh, by the way, are you any relation to a Bob Belcher? Ah, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, oh, Mike Wheeler replied. Let's see what his reply was. You know, indeed. Well, very good, Mike. You are definitely, definitely agree with that. Carlos Strawn, oh, he's working on my Tomorrow Girl Punchline comic book, uh, and a very good artist in his own right. He says, "Curse, being a surgeon meant too, work, too much work. No, really, because I can't see myself doing anything else, and I tried. I love everything about this medium. Well, you know, maybe that was your calling. You know, that was just God's way of saying, hey, Carlos, uh, be a comic artist. You know, surgeon, not so much. Carlos Raphael says, to get those stories in my head, out of my head, and impart them into the world. Oh, yes. I think it's the dream of every comic creator to share their idea and to be accepted, you know, and and to be, uh, and to change other people's lives. That's, you know, that's, that's a great, worthy thing to do. You know, um, Scott Sackett says, I love superhero comics and I love telling a story visually. When I was actually trying to break into comics from double O to 15, everybody in the business seemed cool. All the editors were great. I got to visit Marvel Comics twice. I even met and became friends with C.B. Sapolsky back when he was an associate editor in Marvel. Man, was I wrong. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to feel that you were disappointed, Scott. I know C.B. Sapolsky. He was the one instrumental in doing the uh, Marvel manga verse at the time. And uh, we, uh, you know, we don't really talk much in the, these days because I'm sure he's a very busy man. But hey, CB, give me a drop me a line. Maybe we can revive that Marvel manga verse idea someday. Dan Johnson's reply. Let's see what his reply is. Timing was everything, brother. And your time and mine is quickly coming with Black Cricket. Ooh, that sounds like a really interesting character. Uh, I think I actually got a submission from him for, uh, for exciting comics. You know, I'll keep in touch with you, Scott. Keep in touch with me. Jake Goodman says, I like making people smile. If my art can bring joy, then I've accomplished the coolest part of our creativity. It'd be nice to get it seen, though, laugh out loud. Well, I guess, you know, you are in a very stiff competition, Jake Goodman. I hope whatever you're working on will uh, break out and become a huge success. You know, I just keep at it, you know, keep at it. Brandy Jean-Baptiste, because I love to... I love you make comic books. Because I love you make comic books. Me Tarzan, because I love you make comic books. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to assume English is not your first language. Well, I'm glad you love comic books. Yeah, I'm glad you love comic books. Because I do too. I love comic books. I think it's probably one of the joys of my life that I love producing. I love seeing. You know, I love other people doing it. It's just amazing how much variety there is out there. Scott Fry says... Nothing as powerful as being creative and entertaining people. That is true. You know, I mean, if, if we weren't creative and entertaining people, what would we be? We'd just be no different than, you know, even cavemen entertain themselves by drawing on walls, you know. And uh, that, that, that's to show you that, you know, we all have a creative spark or soul you know, that, is, that was given by some higher being, maybe some higher power. I don't know. can't say for sure. You know, but there must be something going on for uh, us as a species to be able to create such amazing works of art. 
Michael Garcia says, it's all I ever wanted to do. Comics are the greatest storytelling medium out there, in my opinion. True, true. Here, here, Michael. You know, it's it's one of the simplest, that's for sure. Anybody can do it. You know, I would encourage anybody with a great idea to express it. Put it out on paper. Don't keep it locked up in your head. Share it with the world. Larry Holder says, to write and share my own ideas and stories. Yes, I'm getting a lot, a lot. They just, people just want to share their ideas and stories, you know. I mean, if you really want the truth, what's the point of actually doing anything creatively if you're not going to share it with people? I mean, yeah, you can do it for your own edification. Sure. You know, keep yourself amused. Keep yourself entertained, you know. But that's a... Uh, it's 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 I'm sure it's the dream of almost every creative soul out there to share their ideas with the world. You know, Mike Spagnola says, because I'm currently creating my own superhero since I was around six or seven years old. Wow, I'm currently 54. Good gosh. I mean, you grew up what in the 60s, I mean, the 70s and 80s. I mean, yeah, you were, that was those were good times when comics were cheap, you know, and people and and, and you know, people were were different and treat people with respect, you know, uh, before the internet. Pedro Angosto says, guess, guess to write DC and Marvel characters. I green up reading. I made it as, I made it as far as Big Bang comic pa pastiches, which are more than better. Well, Pedro, I, I hope you still continue to want to work at getting to Marvel and DC. It's it's one of those things I'm sure a lot of creators dream of. I was fortunate enough to work for both Marvel and DC, albeit on a very limited capacity, you know, and it was certainly an experience, you know, one that uh, uh, I would only do if I wanted a steady paycheck, you know, but, uh, but I don't think they'd probably be interested in me anyway, not these days. Brian O'Connell says, as a teen... My best prospects were in the food industry. At least that's what I was taught. Chose otherwise the moment I could drop out of high school. One of the worst schools in New York City when I was a kid. Oh, Brian, Brian, Brian. You know, I, I think you probably would have been better off in the food industry, to be honest. At least that's steady work. You know, but I can understand you wanted to do comics. You know, comics are something that a lot of people dream of. You know, and, uh, you know, and people have ideas they want to share, and that's great. Uh, Jermaine Webb, uh, I always wanted to be an artist, and somewhere in middle school, it, it from just being an artist to being a comic book artist. We somehow evolved into graphic design through my schooling, so I guess I still want to tell a story, but I guess it's opened the door and all the media in which storytelling can be too. Yes, that's true, Jermaine. I mean... Uh, comic book art is a unique, I think it's unique, I think it's very unique in that it allows a combination of narrative storytelling with uh, graphic art, and uh, it's a really very unique combination, and it's something that I think attracts almost anybody, I mean, anybody can enjoy a comic book, you know, you just gotta do the right comic book for the right uh, audience. David Sandoval says, I love telling stories. Now, don't we all, David? Don't we all? I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why we are in this business. Derek Manson says, I love comics. Yes, Derek, good for you. I love comics, too, you know. But uh, as P.B. Herman would say, well, why don't you marry him? <laughs> no, just kidding. You know, I just love uh, love comics. In, uh, uh, but, you know, it shouldn't be, it, you know, how we relate with our loved ones and family should be, of course, more important. But, yeah, I think there's room for loving comics. Uh, John Michael Helmer says, why not? Well, that's true. You know, why not? You know, I think it's just about as good a reason as any, I suppose. You know, uh, Chow Martin says, same reason as everyone else, I guess. We love doing it. Yes, and he even included a page of a book. He's, I assume he's working on Let's take a look at that. Very interesting. Mm, see, look at that. No words at all, but you can follow the story. So, you know, here's an example of comic books at work. You know, you have a, he set the setting and uh, of some sort of base or lighthouse or something like that. Shows this guy reacting somewhat. You see he's emotional and now he's walking away. And now he sees, ooh, I don't know if I should show this. No, ooh, ooh. I didn't know it was going to be naughty. Uh, you know, but... Uh, Yep, yeah, there. Yeah, and uh, let's see. Oh, lost my place. Let's see, where was I? Oh, there we go. I made it easy. 
Eddie Bendita says, I feel like I was born with that desire. As long as I can remember, I've been drawing, creating my characters. Oh my gosh, Eddie, that's so great. You know, when you're growing up and you have uh, dreams of certain characters doing certain things, you know, that's, that's fantastic. Kurt Hathaway says, became a fan in 72 when I was 12. Wow, that's a great age to start getting into it. I was already drawing usually war scenes. Yes, war comics, when they were still doing war comics. So it sort of uh, uh, and, and turned my attention to superheroes, and it grew from there. I wasn't interested in drawing trees, cars, or park benches, so I'd never be a penciler. Oh, it's too bad. you got to be able to do that. You know, you got to be able to draw the tar 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 park, park, park benches. You know, you could have been known as the comic artist who did the fan best fantastic park benches ever. So I went into lettering 40 years ago at over 1,400 deadlines. Well, yes, yes, I guess lettering is just as important as any part of the aspect, you know. So uh, it used to be hand lettering. You could tell one letter from another, actually. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Shut up. I'm not my father. Trust, but you'll still die like him. Oh, oh, ouch. That is, that's not good. Not good at all. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Mark Haynes says, to let the, all the crazy, to let out all the crazy in my head. Oh my gosh, yes. Craziness. You don't want to have craziness piled up in your head. Let it all out. Drawing, if, drawing comics, let's not all that crazy out. Then by all means, you know, you should keep doing it. Sean Barber says, to fulfill a dying wish for my grandmother and to have something I can leave behind for my kids that represents something I had passion for and that I created with my own hands. Well, Sean, that is fantastic. You uh, you have kids. That's you know, you're creating the next generation of uh, people, and uh, it's you know if that is your goal is to leave something behind creatively, I mean that's fantastic. If you can make it a success, then you would leave more than just a legacy. You would leave something that they can actually uh, uh, they can actually use for in, in you know when they grow up. You know, I mean a lot of uh, there's a lot of people uh, who had nothing to do. We still the creative, but yet they still control the IP. Yeah. Lee Norling says, I did it because I love what I saw and began doing it myself. Starting in the fourth grade, first book after seeing a comedy of terrors in the theater was Lee Norling's comic book of horrors written and drawn in a blank accounting book. All the lines that it helped me. <laughs> he first influences Dr. Seuss, Don Martin, Charles Schultz. Big Daddy Roth and Dan O'Neill and Joe Pfeiffer. Oh, very good influences. Very interesting, very creative people. You know, that is um, definitely something that a lot of us are influenced by, by other creators, you know. And you may be the next generation of creator that influences a new generation. So, you know, M. Anthony Swan. For my own sanity. Ooh, another person with another creator with some craziness stuck in his head. I spent my childhood making homemade comics, designing board games, writing stories and drawing. Then I was expected to stop all that and become a soulless drone. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, M. Anthony Swan. You know, I, mean, I hope that you'll continue to do drawing, even if you are a soulless drone. Maybe, maybe being drawing comics will bring back your soul. Who's to say? Who's to say? You know, John Apple, because there are plenty of things I can do, but it's all it's always been the one thing I want to do. Oh my gosh, yes, of course. We all want to do things we want to do. Oh, he's got two replies. Let's see what his replies are. You know. Mark McHale says, That's deep, mate. Yes, very deep. Uh John Apple says, Well, that's one that's my one for the day. Thanks, man. Laugh out loud. <laughs> See, people here in the comic creator are very positive, you know. I think that uh, we need, to, as a community, come together and enjoy each other's work, you know, and not be so critical of each other. It's, you know, I've always believed that every creator is unique, you know, has a unique thing and unique style, you know, and they should appreciate it for that, you know, alone, you know. Uh my, Saul Washington says, my origin story. Who's got an origin story? I saw pictures of Milton Caniff and Hal Foster in their studios drawing when I was six. I knew I wanted to do ever since. My gosh, how old are you, Saul? I mean, that, that pushes you quite a bit. Milton Caniff, Hal Foster. For those who don't know who Milton Caniff is, he does Terry and the Pirates. And Hal Foster did Prince Valiant. Those were all very classic, uh, well-known, very talented com comic strip artists. You know, and uh, wow, to have to see them in, 
in uh, in real life, that is something else. Too bad they weren't radioactive and bit you so they would transfer their talent. <laughs> just kidding. So I'm just kidding. Scott A. Story. At this point, I wonder why I didn't do it so much. Why I didn't, didn't want to do it. <laughs> Let me try that again. Scott A. Story. At this point, I wonder why I did want it so much. Well, I can understand that, Scott. You know, comics are a bug that when you once bitten, it's hard to uh, hard to get rid of. A little more than 20 years was enough for me. When I began, I had an inflated ego. Well, <laughs> there's news to you, Scott. Most creators have that and saw myself heading toward the top. When I got out of it, my ego was shot. Oh, my gosh. Still, still there were some good times. Why did I want it so much? I'm having a hard time answering that. Maybe I was misinformed. Well, perhaps you have. <clears throat> if uh, if you need to be informed, Scott, then I'm sure there are people in the community who are more than willing to help you out with that. Uh, Dan Natko says, mainly to take vengeance on my enemies by turning them into background characters that die horrifically and ironically. That and the sweet, sweet dental plan. Oh well, my gosh, I don't know who you're working for, but you're lucky to have a dental plan. And, uh, oh, well, you know, if you have... I'm, I assume if you have enemies and you want to, you know, put them in uh, situations where they meet their demise, uh, then uh, good for you. Let's let that crazy out. Let that crazy out. Brian Ware says, loving to tell a story from different world and letting come to life. Yes. You know, you are God. A comic creator is a God. He can create, you know, from nothing into something. And that's that's the beauty of it all. Russ Leach, because I love the medium and its ability to communicate. Oh, very true. Very true, Russ. Very true. But, you know, the more above that, you know, people, you just want to share your idea. That's always good, too. I mean, the medium is great. I love the medium, too. J.D. Calderon, he does uh, Tall Tales, I think. Oh, no. Uh, he does a furry book. Very nice. I think I'm going to be doing it in furlough. But he says... Uh, it always seemed like the greatest way to show everyone the fantastical realms that I see in my mind's eye and the people would have it. Oh, yes. Of course, we do want that. We want to show people how we can create stories and characters and, you know, worlds. And it's just a fantastic feeling. Oh, Zing Zing replies. He does a thing called Zimfani Versus, a very popular indie comic from what I understand. You know, he says, yep, very good, Zing few words say so much. Orlando Baez says, The inspiration came when I saw Jay Leno introducing Rob Liefeld with a young blood comic and I became more interested. Wow! You saw a Jay Leno thing with J Rob Liefeld and that inspired you to do comics? Whew. Boy, luckily, luckily, you were in the right place at the right time. Paul Beal says, I just love comics so much and wanted to make my own. Well, Paul, that is fantastic. That is something uh, that all, I'm sure, all comic book creators aspire to do. Benito Tovar Jr. says, I love to draw. I wanted to create comics. Oh, I gave a little hearty emoji there. Nice. Yeah. David Kams, Kams Cassie. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, David, but uh, that's the way I'm just pronouncing it phonetically. Kams Cassie. My family had a cinema when I was young. Whoa, wow. That must have been a childhood to, to, have a, to have your own movie theater. That is fantastic. I watched so much movies that I began to imagine stories. But I had no way to do movies, so I began to tell my stories by comics. That is the beauty of comics, man. You don't need to, to, to have a budget, a huge budget, and so many people working on movies. Just, just you, a paper, piece of paper, and a pencil, and you can just start drawing away. Dan Johnson says... Why did I want to be a comics creator? Because nothing else would ever do. I have known that since I was seven years old. You know, a lot of people here say that uh, the passion for comics started very early. And that's very important. That's why I think comics need to attract younger readers. Because if you don't, you're, you're, you're not uh, giving them, you're not, we're not allowing the new generation to rise. Comics are my passion in my life and the thing that gives me purpose in life. My gosh, Donna, that is... That is fantastic, you know, that to have something to drive you. Don Walker says, I'm a storyteller at heart, and comics are my preferred medium to tell them in. Well, that's fantastic, Don. You know, Don is a very, very, he he's get, pretty much tells the same story that all of us feel, is that we have stories we want to tell. Joseph Hayo Olisco, I'm not good at anything else. 
Well, just don't sell yourself short. I'm sure you're good at other things. You know, uh, the, the thing is to try to find out what it is. But if you're really good at what you want to do and you're happy with it, then yes, you know, that is that is also a great thing. Tom Foster, I love the medium. Oh, well, yes, don't we all? Jonathan Colwin says, I was a bit inspired by those little profile questionnaires that would have an old Marvel comics. They would have an old, an old Marvel comics. I like the format for telling stories. <laughs> well, thank goodness those questionnaires appeared in old Marvel comics. Kristen Zafto, because it's fun AF. Oh my goodness, what does AF stand for? I'll leave that up to you. You know. <clears throat> hey, as we oh, got a reply from Mark McHale. Ooh, yes. A OK. Very nice. Mark McHale says cartoon animation was my first stop, then 3D animation, then comic book creation. Well, you went about around uh, about by eight to start doing comics. I wanted to produce work which inspired me as a kid. Still remember the day that day I said I was going to do it. I was stuck in a hospital as a kid with a meningitis. Oh my gosh. I used it as a motivation to get myself better. Well, see, comics can cure meningitis. Hey, medical community, look, look. Chuck Dixon, I had nowhere else to go. Oh, geez, Chuck, gosh. Well, I'm sure glad that you had somewhere to go and started doing comics because we are better off with for it. Oh, there's more comments. thought I was at the end, but apparently there's even more. Michael Hickma says, Since I was a kid, I always wanted to work in comics. So far, I've inked on four projects as an adult. Now, if I could just get more steady inking work. Well, Michael, I'm sure if you keep at it, you know, people will discover your talent and they'll find you even more. But, you know, these days, I'm not sure if inking is such a is such a high demand these days. A lot of people are doing digital inking, which uh, I think is uh, something that uh, is unfortunate. Uh, but, uh, hey, you know, maybe since you can do inking, you should. a lot of inkers became artists eventually. You know, so maybe you can start doing that. Thomas Nathan Rong... Ik Wrong it's wrong it's, it's yeah, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Thomas. To share and create something I love. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh Borgi Borg Borgonia. Comics help teach me how to read, to understand the dynamics of good and evil, and I believe that people can be better. I thought maybe with a little or much effort I can do the same. Very, very, very good sentiment, Borgia. That is so true, so true. Comics can be a fantastic teaching tool. Um, homie, who doesn't want to read comics? It does teach you how to read. Um, it does teach you some moral interplay, you know, and how we should treat each other as people and human beings. Uh, Black Jones says, I love comics for 40 years plus and been an artist for longer. Stan Lee and Jim Shooter have always been an inspiration, but Dwayne McDuffie gave me that fire to buy my vision to the world. Yeah, you know, it often that we are inspired by other creators, and that's, that's fantastic because, you know, they are the ones... Who are trying to create the new generation? You know, Austin Allen Hamblin says comics help me escape bad times by transporting me into a story. I want to do the same thing for other people. Excellent, fantastic sentiment, Austin. James Bender Smith, I actually wanted to be a comic book uh, creator, but a typo sealed my fate. Oh my gosh, yes, typos. Yeah, I hate typos. You know, Paul Tuma, I thought I could do it for a living, and I love drawing superheroes. It didn't pan out. Though I still draw, but have no realistic belief that it's pain, a pain career for most artists. Well, Paul, unfortunately, you are true, but I would not give up. You know, you never know that the next thing you do is going to take off and be a huge success. It's like that cartoon where you see this treasure hunter uh, looking for treasure and he stops just mere feet from a huge treasure. You don't do that. Don't be that. Keep at it. Richard Davis I needed an outlet to cope with my nightmares. Oh my gosh, yes, another example of trying to keep do the get those crazies out. Paul Ewart, because it was a way to tell stories. Well it's true. It is a very good way to tell stories. That's I will not I will not dispute you, Paul. Randy Zimmerman, hashtag comics save me. Comics had a huge impact on my youth and development. It's all I've ever wanted to do. Tell stories, words and pictures. Very good, Randy. Very good. And uh, keep at it. Larry Young because 200 M for a space movie. Oh, 200 million for a space movie was out of the question. And I get that story from like, Well, you know, you don't have to spend 200 million on a space movie. If you were clever enough, you can make a space movie for a million. You just got to be very clever at it. You know, it's not about the money that you have. It's how how you spend it. 
And uh, But good. I'm glad that you see that you're still wanting to do comics. Christopher Rice says, to tell stories I love and wanted to see in comics. Well, there you go, Christopher. Mark McHale. Oh, he's back again. Some really good answers here. Like, oh, very excellent, Mark. I'm glad, you, uh, I'm glad you're finding it enjoyable. Garrett Gunn, make cool stuff with my friends. Oh, so you're just showing off to your friends, eh, Garrett? And you're not doing it for yourself? Well, that's okay. You know, whatever floats your boat. Scott O. Brown, it's simple as a lifelong love in the medium of storytelling in general. Comics are magic. They are magic. You know, how you can create, you know, something, you know, in, uh, something from nothing is just a, a testament to, you know, our creative community. Eric Franklin, because comics have always helped me through dark times. And I want to pay the same joy forward to someone else. Oh, that is so selfless of you, Eric. That is fantastic. I'm glad that you're sharing your visions with the world. Oh. Uh, Jorg Valdez, I was an artist first, but I was always infatuated with telling a good story. Comics have loaded my talent to convey a story with pictures, and I got into cinema production. Uh, same steps are taken within design, story, and visual media. I want to share my universe and story with the world. Comics are a vehicle of permanence, so come on in. Let's take a ride. Wow. Let's just see what he's got here. Oh, he's got uh, a website and everything. Wow. Look at that. Very impressive. Yeah. <clears throat> Mike Robinson, I already am a comic creator. My stuff hasn't just hasn't caught on much. Well, Mike, I, I would encourage you to keep at it. You know, you never know when that next big thing you're going to do, next thing you're going to do will be the next big thing. You know, so keep at it. David Wilson says, because I totally suck at everything else. Well, oh, my gosh, you know, don't don't say that. I'm sure you're good at something else, you know. Uh, but hey, you know, if if, if comics is uh, what you're really good at, then keep at it. David Ramirez, foolishness? Well, I think there's a little bit of foolishness in everybody. Marketing comics, why not? True, true. I mean, why not? You're sure. Uh, not really much of a reason, but uh, hey. You know. uh, Daniel Gilbert, I used to read the Captain Underpants books when I was a kid. Oh, you're a young whippersnapper. The main characters, George and Harold, were kids who drew their own comics, saying that just made me kind of want to do it. So I did. Very good. Look at that. My gosh. Yeah. Ooh. I hate when it puts it in. Oh, well, it should be easy to find. There we go. Brandon Blacks, because I love drawing and telling stories. It was, it was given for me. I'm called to create. There you go. You can't deny your calling. Bartik. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Don't know. It's fun, I guess. Oh, you don't know? Telling the story. It's like writing a novel without the excess words and like making a movie but without the ridiculous workload. And it's fun. Well, there you go. You've hit the nail on the head. It's fun. Danny Ferbert. Oh, I've published some of his work before. I've always wanted to since like I was four. Oh, my God, you must have been a very precocious four-year-old. I was already drawing. I like funny cartoons, and that's what I wanted to do. I didn't decide on comics specifically until sixth grade when I realized how much work went into uh, a cartoon, how little, how little creative input you got. I'd started reading Dragon Ball manga by then and showed me I could do much more with a comic. Well, there you go. You discovered manga, and now you got bit by the bug. Phil Coop, because movies are too expensive to tell stories. That is true. It is true. It is very, very true. So why don't you just do the comics? You're not going to have a foundation. Maybe you do a comic. It'll be made into a movie. You know, that that's that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Brian Love, I love drawing, writing, creating wonderful worlds and stories. I just wasn't able to work on it as a living. Something I'm trying to fix now. Yes, Brian, you should never give up. You should keep at it. Keep at it until you can find success. Anthony Pig says... While I can't draw, I love to write stories. Even if it's only for myself. Most of my ideas and stories are probably not marketable. Well, you never know, Anthony. You never know. You know, at least you're putting them on paper. But you know, what is what? Do you, what harm is it to share with other people? You know, you you may have the next big idea. You just you know, you just don't realize it just yet. So you know, don't don't sell yourself short. Winston A. Johnson. I was. Creating art and comic books, so I always somehow found my way or was found through and within the art. As much as I was always planning to be an animator, I was always making comic books. Well, you know, Winston, I mean, the, being a comic book uh, creator is something of a first step to being an animator. You know, sometimes being an animator can be a step to being a comic book creator. So, you know, both, you can switch from back and forth. I mean, I love doing animation. I did it when I was a kid, but God, it is so time-consuming, and uh, the... 
the thing about it is there's no instant payoff for it. So comic books are a way for me to to do something creative and get an instant payoff, you know. But I would like to return to doing animation someday. Oh, I can only dream. Hart Fisher. Oh, Hart, I know you uh, for very well from back in the day. He says, I love it, period. I love creating them. That's it. Well, no true words can be said, Hart. No true words can be said. He is a man with a man with a vision. Nicholas Webb, because I love creating. Yes, Nicholas. Very good. Joe Solis, I grew up loving comics and I'm a very creative person. Well, good for you, Joe. So I've always sought ways to foster that creativity. Actually making a comic just never seemed like an attainable goal until I started meeting people in the indie comic scene who showed me it was possible. Now, I just intend to enjoy this ride, making comics for as long as I can. Well, Joe, see, people in this community are very giving. They will help, you know, people who are just starting out and give them good advice. And hopefully, uh, maybe someday you'll attain your dream of, what, of whatever it is that you want to accomplish with comics. Uh, C.F. Eric Grant, I found that comics was my preferred method of self-expression in my created worlds. I can do anything I like, speak my mind, share experience, and so on. So, C.F., we are gods. We God. We create things, you know. So it's a very unique thing. I mean, yeah, I guess uh, we create worlds within worlds. Randy L. Bishop, because of, to this day, I see almost no or very few people with the same perspective I have. And I see the meaning of comics as most ideal for expression. Well, Randy, I am very curious as what that perspective is. It might be uh, something very unique. Uh, John Escobales. Esco, Escobales. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, people. I need to get it out. I need to communicate. I grew up loving comics. I wanted to be Doug Munch. Still do. Well... There you go. Keep at it. You have at least a go to attain. Michael Williams. Writers' rooms in Hollywood are oversaturated, and I had a family that I don't want to raise in that environment. So I decided comics was the best medium. Of course, that was after being invited to edit one. So you, you, so you could. Comics chose me. Oh, well, there you go, Michael. When you heed that comics calling, you cannot be denied. You know. William Thomas Boyer says, The overwhelming desire to create a narrative and make people laugh. I saw others making comics and it brought me joy, so I wanted to do, oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. You are you're wanting to bring joy to people. That is such an incredible, incredible incentive. Jim Bennington, I was inspired by the artist Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, Gil Kane, Cameron and Fidel, Dan Spiegel. Whoa, whoa, there you go. You know, you could not ask for a better group of comic book artists to be inspired by. Mark Wise, love the medium. Uh, Albert Frank Asker, I just love comic books so much. It's an original American art form, and for my money, the best. Yes, a lot of people don't realize it, that yes, American created the modern comic book art form. And we are losing that to other countries. And I think that we need to step up our game to retain that crown once again. Professor Argyle, can't stop the ideas. Good. Let it all out. Tom Carter, to tell my wonderful idea and bring them to life. Excellent. Very good. Keep it, get it, keep it coming, keep it coming. Dan Castro, so I use that talent to somehow take over the world, destroy my enemies. Oh, guess you are. So you want to be the Dr. Doom of comic books. Well, you know, we all have to have a go. Paul, L. Paul Evangelista. I feel like I still have something fun and interesting to say and share with people. Oh, well, that is so nice. Daniel McGinnis, I get to make movies on paper. So true. I mean, even movies have to do storyboards, which are sort of like comics. You know, they're like comics. Sean Lynn, they present an alternative to reality where good always triumphed over evil and had characters I could relate to. Thanks, Chris Claremont. And it seemed natural to keep that medium available for the next generation. Oh, you are looking for you. You are wanting to help create the next generation, create that moral compass that so many of us seem to lack these days. John Souter for the money. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Funny stuff there. Yeah. John, you are hilarious. Risa Chandler. I had story story to claw their way out of my head. Oh, another example. Keeping that crazy, keeping that crazy from building up. Fabio Paolo, Paolo Barbieri. Because I love the art and I think I have stories to tell. Though not many people agree with me on the second part. <laughs> well, Fabio, that's a great name, by the way. <clears throat> Let's see, we only have a few, three, 43 more comics. So we're almost done, people. Please be patient with me. You know, uh, 
Mike O'Malley, I love comics. Excellent. Arrow looks. It looked fun <clears throat> and at the time. Um, not sure what to make of that one. Alex the Bunny, reading Summit Comics. Uh, Patrick Spenzianti, dropping fire on the pages solidified for me. Oh, well, there you go. Here's an example of his work. Wow. Excellent. Oh, my gosh. Here we go again. Uh, Tatong Jorolan, remember dueling through the made up comic pages of a notebook when I was a kid? Felt like a funny journey that I'd suck right into. I do still feel like it from time to time, that's why I'm still at it, even with this busy life. Oh my gosh, good, good, good. Keep creating, even with a busy life. Thomas Ohm, so I can get rid of everything that makes me sick, weak, and vulnerable. Oh my gosh, are you uh, allergic to must be some sort of kryptonite out there? But be my own person to never becoming anything like the creators of my favorites who were discredited and gave up on life. I am more of a multi-franchise, multimedia person. Well, Thomas, that is fantastic. You are a man, of, a, a modern renaissance man. You can do all sorts of things. Daniel Carlson, honestly, my muse does not explain herself. She simply commands and compels me to create. Whoa, that's heavy, man. Something to command you and compel you to create. You know, you cannot, you cannot deny the siren's call. Caleb Thusat, comics allow me the freedom to dream anything and create anyth everything in my head and provides me with a rewarding collaborative experience working with talented artists. Well, that's fantastic. You work with other talented uh, artists and creators. That is that is a great way to make friends. Yeah. James Heche, been creating and making my own brand of comics since the 70s, and now I'm in my 60s. <laughs> well, I'll be approaching that age pretty soon, so I can have, I feel for you. Manthe Vili, writing novels is boring. Well, I guess it depends on the novel, you know. Uh, Matthew Vili again. Writes, writing novels is boring. I guess he wants to emphasize that twice. Rick Moody, to tell my story of my characters. There you go. That's really what it is all about, isn't it, people? Mike Bowman says, pure enjoyment. One, pure enjoyment. Two, no budget required. Three, kiss-ass results. Four, your day job funds your work. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. One, number two, uh, there is a little bit of a budget. You still got to buy the, 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 the materials to create it. Uh, three kiss ass results. Oh well, good. I'm glad that you're happy with what you're doing, and your day job funds your work. Well, maybe someday that won't be the case. You, your actual work will fund your work. You know, your actual creation will fund your work. <clears throat> ah, Rook Singh to tell stories. Our stories, our way is the motto. Plunge to stu Plunge Studios NZ. Ooh, I guess that's his uh, his company. That's great. A lot of creators create their own comic book companies. You know. Mark McHale, because it's easy. Well, if it was easy, everyone would do it, Mark. Ryan Vela, storytelling. Thomas Clemens, for the chicks. Another one for the chicks. Wow. Tell me how that's going along, Thomas. Tell me how it's going along. Tom Malcolm Harris, to show the people the world's in my head. Ooh, and he's got a website there. Let's check it out. Don't be afraid, relentless. Well, it looks like he's got quite a bit going there for quite a bit going. Well, I hope that uh, that's it for now. That's quite a few posts. I hope that my little insight into this wasn't too boring for you guys. But it does show a little insight into the mentality of comic book creators. And uh, so if you like what you heard, it's uh, like and subscribe. And until next time, this is Ben Dunn signing off.